Hi, my name is Shanti. I'm a Singapore girl. I've been flying for Singapore Airlines about seven years. Really like the outfit. It's outstanding in um, elegance. You get attention wherever you go. And when I was young, I was always wondering what it's like on the other side of the world. But now, after 10 years, you know, I'm working at the office 40,000 feet. Um, Flying also uh, make me continue to improve myself in every aspect of life. Um, I'm now actually doing my part-time degree um, in mass uh, communications during my off days and really proud that I get the chance to improve myself and uh, pursue my dreams. I met my husband in San Francisco. He was working on a business conference for Virgin and I flew out there as cabin crew and met him in San Francisco. My husband and I have a daughter, we, um, which is brilliant because the perks of the job means we get to fly to different destinations on our holidays. She's very lucky, she's, she's nearly two and she's been to about five destinations already, so which is brilliant, it's the best, best perks of the job really. nice when you know it's December in London and it's drizzly and cold and snowy and then you get on the aircraft and you know that the other side you're going to face sunshine and the next morning you wake up and the sun's going through the window mm. and you mm. can get out to the beach for a nice run and more than likely bump into another crew member yeah. on the beach or even a By the pool. That's yeah. on the flight that's down there too. Mm. LA is my favourite destination oh, yeah. by far. I'd, yeah, I love the sunshine and going for a run down Santa Monica and Venice. It's glass great. Wine by the and pool. yeah, meeting up with the crew and going for lunch, having a glass of wine and into our favourite restaurants. And you get to meet some fantastic crew, fantastic passengers. Now and again, you get the odd snotty passenger that comes in and out. Worst flights, I'd have to say, can be the nieces because you've got all the little kids running about. The, the adults are fine, but the little kids you get running up and down, and the parents, the nannies can't control them. Most popular name you hear on them sort of flights is Phoenix or Arizona. Why you'd call your kids that, I don't know, but it's funny to hear the mum shouting from the front, Phoenix, come here, or Arizona, and you're looking around. Oh. My name's Karen, I've been flying for Thomas Cook Airlines for nearly nine years. I'm Keely, I've been flying for Thomas Cook Airlines for four years. Uh, we fly together as mother and daughter on quite a few occasions. Um, we find our passengers really like the experience of flying with us. Um, most passengers are quite amazed that we go out into the cabin and um, Keely will ask for something and call me mum. Um, I don't particularly like that, but she can't call me anything else. It's more habit than anything else, trying to sort of call your mum by her real name after so many years you've just called her mum. But so, yeah, the passengers do always seem to find it quite funny. They're quite intrigued by it more, I think. I was part of a team that brought the Paralympians back from Beijing, from the Olympic Games back in 2008. It was an amazing flight, an amazing experience that will never be repeated. I can honestly say that the whole atmosphere on board was electric, just watching them in, in full celebration of what they've achieved. We got a call from one of my colleagues at the back that a customer was very ill and from the way the gentleman looked it was quite clear that um, he was on his way out. Um, in the small confines of the galley area we started to work on the gentleman um, doing some manual um, CPR, so massaging his heart, uh, blowing air into his lungs and at the same time I was attaching a defibrillator. Which... So I pressed the button, the gentleman was shocked, you wait and uh, the machine analyzes again to see if the shock has been successful. It hadn't been, so we commenced a minute of CPR, and I knew instantly that happened, that we got the gentleman back, because he went from being absolutely gray to being pink. And um, I remember picking up his hand and pressing his finger, and his finger filled back up with blood, and I think his heart's beating. We've, we've done okay, he'd survived, and um, this will be the second year that I've received a Christmas card from him. So we're still in touch. The main 
not that tiring in a long haul flight because we really uh, we we were still able to get a rest in flight. We would take shift and we got our own rest area, so we can take a few hours of sleep and really um, rest there. Most of the people are asking us, like, how can you manage that for 12 hours? You you don't sleep, you just walk around, and we just tell them we do get sleep as well. Like half half of the crew are sleeping, and then the other half are like patrolling the cabin and everything. So they find it really like exciting as well. They can't, they don't imagine that you get some rest as well in in flight. Well, when we launched our operation here in March, we tried to create a bit of publicity around our new operation here. And part of that, we got our, to have the Queen on board. Um, she arrived here at the terminal with two bodyguards with her. And we brought her down to check in. Again, a lot of publicity, a lot of attention, a lot of people wondering, was she the real Queen? And brought her down to Duty Free, where she picked up a bottle of gin, checked the price on it, put it back down, not too happy. We brought it onto the aircraft. Um, again, a lot of our passengers, a lot of them were German. They couldn't quite believe that we had the Queen on board. Of course, we didn't. She only a lookalike.